Hello and welcome to Cambridge for Kids History Podcasts with me, Matthew Brooks. I'm an archaeologist and I love history. And in these podcasts, I would like to share my knowledge and discoveries with you. This is episode three of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World series. In this episode, we travel to present day Turkey and gaze upon the Temple of Artemis, the goddess of fertility and birth and protector of women. You will learn about the fearsome all-women warriors, the Amazons, the connection to Alexander the Great, and why the ancients considered the temple to be the most striking of all the wonders. Onward. The Temple of Artemis is one of the seven wonders of the world, and the first temple to be completely made of marble. Like all other temples dedicated to Artemis, it was facing towards the west, unlike other Greek temples that all faced the east. The temple was designed and built in the 6th century BC. Early building work was made at the expense of Croesus, the wealthy king of Lydia, which is present-day Turkey. Swampy ground was selected for the building site as a safety measure against earthquakes. Artemis was a Greek goddess, daughter of Zeus, and the twin sister of Apollo, the god of the sun and light. She was thought to be born in Ephesus, and was the goddess of fertility and birth. The Greek Artemis was outfitted in a long dress, holding a bow with arrows, much like her brother Apollo. Each year in spring a festival was planned devoted to Artemis. During the feast days, there were live athletic games, poetry competitions, and live sacrifices, following national holidays in ancient Asia Minor. The temple was a place of protection and sanctuary, a custom that was connected with a tribe of famous warrior women, called the Amazons, who took refuge there, as well as Hercules, or so the myth tells us. The Temple of Artemis was built in Ephesus, a city on the coast of modern-day Turkey, and was destroyed in 356 BC in a great fire. The very same night, Alexander the Great was born. A local scholar later stated that Artemis was too busy overseeing Alexander's birth to save her burning temple. Alexander later offered to pay for the temple's reconstruction but the Ephesians rejected his offer. They said it would not be right for one god to build a temple to another god. Eventually the temple was repaired after Alexander's death in 323 BC, but was again destroyed during an invasion by a barbarian tribe called the Goths sometime later. The Ephesians would restore the temple again for a third time. Following the next two centuries, The citizens of Ephesus converted to Christianity, and the temple was razed to the ground by a band of Christians. And the stones were used again in the creation of other structures, mainly in newer Christian churches. Most of the description and art within the Temple of Artemis comes from a man called Pliny, a traveller who travelled throughout the classical world in the 3rd century BC. He composed a book describing the seven biggest structures of the ancient world and named them the Seven Wonders. Pliny described the temple as 377 feet long and 180 feet wide, as big as a football arena, which was completely made of marble. The temple was made up of 127 Ionic-style columns, each being 60 feet in height, four times as large as the Parthenon and the first mammoth building to be entirely fashioned by marble. One ancient scholar described the temple like this. I have seen the walls and hanging gardens of ancient Babylon, the statue of Olympian Zeus, the Colossus of Rhodes, the mighty work of the high pyramids and the tomb of Morsalus. But when I saw the temple at Esophus rising to the clouds, All these other wonders were put in the shade. The Temple of Artemis contained many fine works of art. 
statues by famous Greek sculptors decorated the temple, as well as paintings and gold-plated columns. Many of these statues were of the Amazons, the mythical founders of the city. Copies survive of the legendary statue of Artemis, showing a mother-like appearance, standing bolt upright, with her hands drawn outward. The original statue was made of gold, silver and ebony. The legs and hips were concealed by a dress, decorated with wildlife and bees. And the top of her body was decorated with many breasts, with her head covered with a beautiful headdress. The Temple of Artemis was to be found within a wealthy region of Asia Minor, and traders and pilgrims from all over the known world would visit. The cult of Artemis attracted thousands of worshippers, and they would all flock to the site and pray to her. Many paid tribute to Artemis in the form of jewellery and expensive goods. The temple was shaped by many philosophies, and was seen as a symbol of religious devotion for many different citizens. The temple became a worship centre for people of all faiths, from many lands, including the Ephesians who worshipped Sivali, the mother of Earth Goddess. It was also known as the Temple of Diana, which was the name the Romans gave for Artemis. The Ephesus Artemis, or Diana, was not the same goddess that was worshipped in Greece. The Greek Artemis was a tracker and goddess of the wild hunt. The Ephesus Artemis was a goddess of fertility. The Ephesus Artemis was often shown to be surrounded by eggs, which was considered a sign of reproduction. The temple was surrounded by priests and priestesses, performers, artists and entertainers. The temple even had its own police force on horseback, and the city became rich from the silver statues and luxury goods offered to the goddess. The site of the temple was rediscovered in 1869, on a voyage supported by the British Museum. Unfortunately, all that remains of this ancient wonder is a single column and some relics. Some of the stone is believed to have been used for a nearby mosque, and some of the archaeological remains, a number of artefacts and sculptures, are now kept in the British Museum in London. Hopefully today you have enjoyed this episode and learnt something new. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. Tune in next time with your host, me, Matthew Brooks, for more time travelling. Thanks a lot for listening and have a great day. Hey, Daniel here from the Happy Go Lucky Podcast. The show you've just been listening to is part of the new and upcoming Podicon Go podcasting network. What is Podicon Go, you ask? We're a group of independent creators that are committed to creating, distributing, and supporting content that is clean, fun, and appropriate for all ages. Thank you for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe and show your love for this show with a five-star review. Every time you do, you're helping to support family-friendly content for everyone to enjoy.